There's one. Do this a big one. That's a big one. I think. Do not neglect drag or preschool if you need it, right? Yeah. That's what we got to drag for. It hit something right there, and I was just kept on reeling, and then all of a sudden, I mean, it, the rod just loaded up. That's another big one. Nice one. I mean, look how he's hooked, even down there 15 foot on that rod. Just a beautiful, another six pounder. Man, that's what, like, look, look how, I mean, you can always tell how healthy a fish is by this meat right here, how thick that is. And it is just, these bass down here are just amazing. Obviously guys, we're way offshore here. This is a shallow flat, goes out, you know, we're in about 14, 15 foot of water you know, just isolated rock piles out here. This is a perfect example, you know, for like a big, heavy chatterbait. This is something not everybody's doing. Uh, this is an ounce and a quarter jackhammer. Think of it as like your deep diving crankbait. So I'm just gonna fan cast out here, cast it. You can cast it a mile, as you can see. They go to the bottom. And there's a couple different ways I like to fish this. And that's either just pumping it like you would, like stroking a jig, like a football jig or a worm. And then the other way is just barely crawling it. Put that rod tip down like you would with a, like a crankbait and just really, really slow. And then like if I get a, oh, like I'm up, up against something right there, you know, I'll just give it like a tug like that. And that gives it that kind of erratic hunting action that the, the chatterbait's kind of known for. And then after you, you go for a little bit and then I'll let it go back down. And again, just reel it real slow, just so I'm bouncing on the bottom. So what's nice about this, I can keep that bait within a foot or two of the bottom, pretty much 90% of the cast. Unlike a crankbait, you know, you, you, you might only hit bottom contact in 10% of the cast. So it, it, it's just, you're, you're gonna keep, if, if the fish are down there close to the bottom, which usually they're on that whatever structure we're fishing, you're just keeping that bait in that strike zone for a longer period of time. And like this, I'm just pumping it back, letting it fall pumping it back, letting it fall. And uh, believe me, you'll know when you get a bite. Big Dude, he absolutely smoked that thing. It's not even that big a one, but man, he just clobbered it. I stroked it off the bottom and it went down and was on on the bottom, and then, I mean, he had just absolutely tomahawked it. You know, it's just a little, just a little four pounder for back rack. You know, nothing, nothing too crazy. That's what we do down here. But I see jackhammers. You know, I, I use two different sizes fishing offshore, and that's the three quarter or the ounce and a quarter, just depending on, you know, where, how deep the fish are and where the position. Another one offshore, way offshore, like we are right here, is fishing, you know, deep grass lines that you can't see, but you, you, you see them out on your electronics and stuff, casting out there, letting it go to the bottom, and then, uh, you know, just winding it. Whatever speed, here's the number one key to, to fishing grass, whether it's deep grass or shallow grass, whatever speed you need to wind it, whether it's slow or fast, just so that that chatterbait is making contact with that grass. It doesn't have to be contact all the time, but it needs to be hitting that grass. But it, if you go too slow, then you're clogged up in the grass. And if you go too fast, you're not hitting the grass. So there's that happy speed where you're actually making contact with the grass, but you're not getting it clogged up in the grass. And that, when you find that speed, that's the real key. It's a great way to cover water. And then, you know, I mean, let's say I catch two or three off a spot right here, then maybe pick up the, the jig or, you know, a worm or a drop shot, Nico rig, and just get it dialed in. But that's what's really nice about this big, heavy chatterbait is you can, you can cover water, find those fish, 
And a lot of time, I mean, you can catch a bunch on it when you find that school. And then, you know, it could lead into a little bit more finesse tactics after you, you hurt them a little bit. This is a uh, technique that it'll, it'll work from, uh, you know, your, your standard reservoir style lake all the way to northern lakes fishing deep grass or rock piles on natural northern lakes for smallmouth or, you know, catching northern bass or, uh, you know, even, you know, like I said, deep clear water reservoirs where you're fishing, you know, offshore structure, TVA, river lakes. Uh, I mean, it's, it's one, of the, one of the ways that you can really find fish and target big ones. Oh, I just had one right there. He got it, he hit it on the fall. Oh, he hit it again. I got him that time though. See, yeah, we got that. Really nice parabolic action allows us to. That's a good one too. You know, offshore you find these fish that nobody is messing with. Nobody is messing with. And they look like that. Ounce and a quarter jackhammer with the Yamamoto Zako. And that's what it produces right there. That's legit. And a lot of people have a tendency after they miss a bite, oh, they reel it back in. Don't reel it back in, let it go right back down to the bottom. That, that fish, he just thinks that he, or she, he or she just thinks they, you know, they miss that bait and it's trying to get away from them. So a lot of time it even gets the, the fish more active and gets them fired up. They're ticked off that they missed that meal and they're just gonna keep on going after that, whatever that forage is that they think it is. So real, you know, I've always just used like a mid-range gear ratio, a 6-3 to 1, um, something you want something with a good drag, you know, because I keep that drag pretty well locked down, and I want something that has a nice large handle on it so I can get, you know, a lot of power on those big fish when you're cranking them in. And, you know, for me, it's either a Daiwa Steeze 6-3 to 1 or the new Tatula Elite 6-3 to 1. Both those reels just perform real, real well. Ever since I started fishing bladed jigs, it was just 20, 20 pound fluorocarbon. I mean, that, I, don't, I don't ever switch from that. Uh, it, it's just what works for me. And you can really horse those fish around real well. And you, you, you know, if you get a big one on, you're not gonna have an issue with it breaking. And you know, I just, I really, really like the Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon. It's uh, nice and limp, you know, it's super strong. And that's just what I've always used is is that FC Sniper 20 pound. You know, I try to keep it pretty simple. I'm into the two baits that I've designed for the back of the jackhammer. And, and that's, uh, you know, the original Zocco and now the, the new paddle tail Zocco that just came out. And, you know, I, I, I love the original. I've caught thousands of bass on it and a lot of people love it too. But, you know, sometimes there is that need for when those those fish just want a, a bigger wobble to that to the to that trailer so you know we kind of filled that void and some people that's all they throw is a paddle tail style swim bait on the back of their bladed jig so you know we have the regular zocco and we got the the paddle tail e either one works really really well whichever is your poison and what you prefer if you want a more subtle style use the original zocco if you want more you know more kicking try the new paddle, paddle tail Zocco. It's been uh, been deadly down here. When the chatterbait first came out, you know, everybody's using like, it was almost like a little spinnerbait trailer, you know, just a little double tail. And there was, you know, a handful of guys started throwing a swim bait style trailer. So it gives it that profile. You don't want something too big. You know, I would say anywhere from three and a half to five inches is probably the right size. Um, and not, not too wide on the bait because you just don't want it to to mess up the action. But uh, three and a half to five inches on a trailer or some kind of uh, swim bait style profile is really uh, what I've found to be the most productive on the bladed jig. And that's what I throw all the time.